Gay Thomason, director at Beckham Institute. I'm going to present you today who could lead the PE market in 2016. But before looking at the future, let's look at what just happened in 2015. We reached 50 gigawatt of installed capacity at the end of the year, with a total cumulative capacity of around 230 gigawatts. These 50 gigawatts are extremely interesting because if we are looking only 11 years in the past, we were only at 1.1 gigawatt installed, and so the market was multiplied by almost 50 in a bit more than one decade. But what could we expect for the future? Can we expect to multiply the market again by 50 in just one decade? This is something I wouldn't bet on. And what is extremely interesting, if we are looking a bit more in detail, is what we can see is that the market developed mainly in Europe, but now these are Asian countries that are driving the market. What to expect in the coming years? If we are looking at the forecast from the PV Market Alliance, uh, in which Beckham Institute collaborates with renewed consultancies, we can see that basically our expectations from 2016 are not so different from what we would have expected from 2015. And the reason is that the development of the market in a certain number of countries is much more complex than what has been expected. And even in 2015, some had extremely high expectations for the market, around 56, even 59 gigawatts. But at the end, only 50 gigawatts were realized. We can see that 50 gigawatts is not that bad compared to 40 gigawatts that have been installed and reconnected in 2014. And it's indeed the case. But if we're looking a bit more in detail, it means, and that's what we're going to see in the coming slides, that this development was realized in a certain number of countries where, basically in 2015, the outcome was positive. The growth was there in China, in Japan, in the US, even in Europe, in India, and in most emerging markets. And if we're looking at this situation, it means that we had a major growth going from 40 to 50 gigawatts, thanks to the positive development in these six regions or countries of the world. Now if we're looking at the trends from 2014-2016, the situation is a bit different. Europe is expected to decline, Japan is expected at least to decline, perhaps to stabilize in the best case, and what about China that could slightly grow? So we can expect growth in the US, in India, in many emerging countries, but with only four regions out of six where the growth will be significant in 2016, what could we expect? And if we're looking at the market leaders in 2016, and if we put numbers on what, what we could expect, basically what we could see is that we will have most probably a market decline in Japan and in Europe. Will that market decline be compensated completely or only partially? by the growth of the other countries. Of course, the growth of the US, the growth of India, and the growth of other countries around the world could be significant and will be most probably sufficiently high to compensate the decline in Europe and in Japan. But this will have consequences at the end, because if we want to see a major growth in the world, it means that most regions and most countries have to develop accordingly and what we can see is that here in 2016, we'll have at least two of the major places in the world where PV used to develop or was still developing in 2015 that will experience, if not a stabilization, most probably a negative growth. And this might have consequences. Of course, the fight between China and the US for the first place will be extremely interesting. And given the population of these countries, and the level of their GDP, it's normal that they stand in the first place. But Europe and Japan are declining, and even if India and the rest of the world will grow in 2016, we could say that the perspectives are bright, but not as bright as they could appear. So there is a major question. Which are the consequences for the PV industry? If some actors are already saying that we might experience overcapacities again at the end of 2016, and this comes from the fact that many new capacities have been put online or will be put online in the coming months with a growth that will not be at the level that many could expect. So is it the time for a second price war in the PV industry? I thank you for your attention.